Today we're visiting Blenevin Ironworks. It was the first ironworks to be built with several furnaces and it opened in 1789. By 1800 South Wales had become the foremost iron producing region in the world. In the following years iron rails produced here were exported worldwide to India, Russia and Brazil. Strikes due to wage cuts caused years of economic struggle, but by 1870 the ironworks began to produce steel, being only one of the six sites in South Wales that made the change successfully. But the firm overreached and once again began to fail. Between 1877 and 1878, Sidney Gilchrist, Thomas and Percy Gilchrist perfected a method to remove phosphorus from iron. The basic Bessemer converter enabled the use of previously unusable phosphoric iron ore. This gave the ironworks the edge until other manufacturers began using the technique. In 1880 the Blenevin company opened a coal mine called Big Pit, ceasing production of iron in 1904 with a brief attempt to restart in 1924. Although the forges were still used for the production of shell steel during both world wars, the site was largely used as a storage site for the National Coal Board. Today it is a World Heritage Site and the Blast Furnaces, Cast House, Foundry and Blast Towers are Grade 1 listed buildings. This is a big room in which a lot of ironwork has been stored, some of it's more sturdy and some of it's quite nice and ornate. I'm standing in the furnace. Unfortunately the Cast House, where the iron was actually poured into moulds, is shut because there are electronic bits in there that are supposed to show you how it's done that are failing. It was at this ironworks that Sidney Gilchrist Thomas and his cousin Percy discovered that if you crushed limestone and mixed it with tar and made bricks from that and you lined what was called the Bessemy converter, you could remove phosphorus from iron. And that was incredibly important here because there came a point where they were struggling to make ends meet and they had all this iron that they couldn't use because it was laden with impurities and specifically phosphorus. And this removed that, which meant they had more usable iron this place is a really good example of industrial progression. Now the whole process starts with these kilns in a process called calcining. What you're doing is you're removing moisture and sulphur from the iron ore. So the process works like this. You take iron ore and coke and you stick it into these furnaces. Now coke is just pre-burnt coal but it burns hotter than coal so you chuck that in there and then you let it burn but you don't really sort of do a busting great deal other than just drop it into the top and it's light and it sort of works its way through and then it's shoveled out at the bottom and then it's thrown into furnaces over here. Now the furnace process burns an awful lot hotter because you're blowing in air and the air makes it burn at a ridiculous temperature. In order to get iron out of iron ore you've got to burn it hotter than a volcano. That hot! So you've got steam engines down there which are pumping air into the furnaces to make them burn hotter and hotter. Again you're burning with coke which is the key to the thing. It makes the whole thing burn an awful lot hotter than the charcoal that they were using before that was just a rubbish system really. Now this process is kicking out some pretty noxious gases which it's quite handy to know actually burn, which means that you can use those gases to power the steam engines which is used to produce the flow of air which makes the furnace burn hotter which allows you to get the iron out of the iron ore. Blenevin was ahead of its game in many ways because it was the second ironworks to be built harnessing steam for power, which just goes to show how new a technology it was. It was the first site in Wales to be built with more than one furnace. This specific ironworks had six. This is the balance tower and it was a water powered structure that was used to lift materials from the lower yard to the upper yard. It's a huge structure but it'd have to be because it was lifting an awful lot of weight. It would also lift goods ready to be shipped to the Abergavenny and Brecknock Canal. You work here with all the noise and all the smoke and all the heat. The heat of a volcano coming from six different furnaces. And then for a break you get to live there. It's hardly a massive gap between work and rest. But I should imagine with all the smoke it would have been dark, really dark. You wouldn't have been able to see very far at all. Uh, those that could see, because you know what happens when you get around a bonfire and you get smoke in your eyes. Imagine that on a massive scale. 
every day without respite. When the ironworks first opened, these cottages were built to attract workers from other ironworks. They were basically poaching people from further up north who had a bit of experience with this sort of stuff. And so to do that, they built cottages with pleasant interiors that they could say to these prospective workers, come here, you'll have a nice life. As time went on, it became less necessary to attract skilled workers who were all now living off-site in the village. This was now where the lower grade of worker lived, the manual labour, and they were starting young. Children were working here and working in the pits. There were an awful lot of people living here at a very low wage. It was no longer the luxury that it had once been. By the 1900s, the living conditions in these tiny little cottages was improving. The number of people living in them was severely reducing. Things like electricity were coming along and running water and all of those various different things that make life a little bit more bearable. There were still an awful lot of people living on this site and working on this site. But at least you weren't living very, very close to your neighbours works like this are just dotted around the place and it's a really nice feature. There are ponies at the top that have been made from recycled iron taken from the site. Not sure if they're all recycled iron but I should imagine so and the detail is absolutely beautiful on this, really intricate. It's easy to forget that it was beautiful rolling countryside and then ironworks and coal mining and all that came along. Now it's an industrial landscape, a landscape made by industry. It's an interesting place to come and see how iron was worked and what the buildings looked like that produced so much heat. And the fact that they withstood all that heat for so many years is a testament to the strength of the structures that are here. They would have been used day in and day out under immense pressure, under an immense amount of materials working through the system. I'm just kind of in awe, really, at this place. I think it's intriguing that it's not like a lot of the other sites that Cadu look after, because of the fact it's sort of a more modern history. We're used to sort of seeing castles and Roman forts and strange ditches in the ground, but you can still None see... Of that's bad. No, I'm not saying that that is. The cottages are great, because they go right up to the 60s, and, and looking at some of those... I mean, I've been in houses when I was younger that looked like that, which is sort of, uh, kind of makes you feel old. But with all the engineering archaeology, if you like, the ironworks really do bring your imagination to life, what it was like here. I mean, I can't imagine it must have been awful because yeah. apparently it was ridiculously hot constantly. The people that worked and lived here didn't, didn't live very long. I mean, they were dying out by the time they were sort of 25 years old, which is... That's no lifespan at all, is it, really? No, so it must have been pretty bleak. I would have thought so. Quite relaxing here now. Yeah, but Be beautiful weather for it, though, isn't it? It is absolutely stunning. It's winter, apparently. Autumn. It's autumn. It is autumn. <laughs> it feels thoroughly autumnal. The thing that gets me, though, is the minute you enter the site, the smell of coal just, just hits you. It does. It's not unpleasant at all. No. But see you next time. TGFN.